Thank you for the invitation. Today, I'm going to focus my talk on the virology of the SARS-CoV-2. Here's my outline, and I will briefly touch these five different topics. So the first topic is this a SARS or not SARS. When COVID-19 first emerged, that's the question. Remember, SARS is a severe acute respiratory syndrome. But for COVID-19, majority of patients present only mild disease and some are asymptomatic. So it's not SARS. But at the virus level, COVID-19 virus is 80% identical to SARS-CoV-1. And uh, in virus classification, you know, we have families, genus, and species. So the species for this group is called a SARS-related coronavirus. And uh, they're the same virus species, but different strain. So COVID-19 is SARS, if you look at the, the scientific you know, classification. And then the naming of virus is also complicated. Initially, it was called 2019 novel coronavirus. And the disease name was changed to COVID-19. And the virus name is changed to SARS-CoV-2. So here is a diagram you see a lot on TV and you know, in newspapers. So basically, this is a computer generated uh, uh, image. And uh, if you do a section, then you see the spike protein on top. And uh, if you see a diagram of the genome, and then you have this very long RNA, and the spike protein in grain is a very important protein. If you enlarge the spike protein, as you can see, they have many different domains from N-terminus to the C-terminus. Uh, in between, there's a cleavage site. If you cleave that, it becomes S1, S2. S1 functionally is more important because that's the protein interact with the cell host and also is the target for vaccine and neutralization. So here is the S1 and you have the N-terminal domain and you have the receptor binding domain. The RBD is the most important. And here is the 3D uh, uh, diagram. So this is the viral membrane. As you can see, on the tip of this spike protein is the IBD, which make a direct interact with the human receptor, which is the ACE2 molecule. Here is the family. As I said, the family is divided into you know, four different genera, alpha, beta, gamma, and the delta. In terms of virus now, you look at here, the beta virus, uh, the beta genus is the one that you have to watch the most. So what we have is we have SARS-1 and SARS-2, which form the species of SARS-related coronavirus. And we have a subgenus, this branch called the Sabeco virus. And then the genus is the beta coronavirus, right? The family is uh, coronaviridae. So beta is certainly the one we need to watch. And then Sabeco virus is even more so because all these virus uh, 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 have the potential to infect human and are highly transmissible in human. In addition to the white type virus or the parental strain, now we know there are many other strains circulating in the world. And depends on this variance, you know, the, the uh, phenotype, some of them are called the variants of concern uh, defined by WHO. So we have four currently, and the 117, 1351, and P1, and 617 first detected in UK, South Africa, Brazil, and India. In addition to these VOCs of VOX, you know, we also have voice, the vo variants of interest and the variants under monitoring. There are many questions still being researched upon, but here are the three key questions. Are they more transmissible? Are they more virulent? Can the current vaccines protect against them? Usually one of these questions will be a yes, you know, otherwise it will not be a VOC. But the key question is uh, about vaccines. I think uh, largely that vaccines can protect against variants, but for some individuals, if your immune system was not really efficient and your vaccine induced uh, protect immunity is low, then you're more likely to get infection by the variant than the original strain. So now I'm gonna to switch to the roles of uh, serology, antibody detection in COVID-19 responses. You see all these topics you know, in the news and uh, you know, in scientific forum, the five of them in red to do with human applications, right? Herd immunity, vaccine efficacy, and you name it. The last two in blue is to do with animals. 
One is to search for the animal reservoir. The other is really to monitor possibility of this reverse zoonotic transmission, means human to animal transmission. But what you need is two demand requests. You know, one is to do neutralizing antibody tests. Binding antibody is not specific enough. Secondly, you have to do that in a species independence manner. So we, you know, really discussed uh, here. You look at the diagram you have seen before. If you get infected, your body will produce hundreds, if not thousands of antibodies, but majority of them are what we call binding antibodies. Only very, very uh, a minority is neutral antibodies. Luckily for SARS-CoV-2, we already knew from the research we did with SARS-CoV-1 is the target for neutralized antibody is this spike protein, and more specifically is this receptor binding domain, the very narrow region. So, you know, for neutralizing antibody, classically, you have to go to BSS-3 because SARS-CoV-2 is a BSS-3. The reason you want to do virus neutralization tests is because it's highly specific, but there are lots of disadvantage. It requires a BSS-3 and very, very slow and very expensive. So we invented a technology called a surrogate virus neutralization test, really to address these challenges by determining neutralizing antibody in a species independent manner. The invention is a biochemical simulation. So here on the left, you can see a live virus, you know, diagram. You have a spike protein bind to AC2. This is a cell membrane. And then you enter, kill the cell. In the presence of neutralized antibodies, you block that. What we did is uh, protein engineering. We expressed the soluble part of the AC2 and the coated onto ELISA plate. We expressed the soluble part of the RBD and the conjugated with the host registry proxies chemically. So now it's one step. This RBD, if it can bind to ACE2, you have a color. If it's a blocked by neutralized antibody, you see a reduction of color or abolishment of color. So, and here's the data. This is the live virus neutralization. This is our surrogate virus neutralization. As you can see, the congruence is very good. So we use this methodology to investigate the origin of the SARS. So this is a collaboration with our Thai group. And we discovered that using serology to lead, we discovered a, a novel virus. We call this RAC-CS203. So it's definitely part of this SARS-CoV-2 lineage, but not as close as the other bat virus discovered in China. But serology-wise, we have evidence to say that there are other viruses circulating the bats in Thailand because this is using a surrogate virus neutralization test. And we have four bat samples are positive, especially this B20272 has a very high neutralized antibody. So this suggests that the antibody was induced by a virus different from the one that we have genome sequence. Of course, you know, this research is not limited to our group. You know, there's a, a, a preprint now from a, a Cambodia group discover similar virus in bats in Cambodia. And then two Chinese groups discover more SARS-CoV-2 related virus in bats in China. The latest one from the Wuhan Institute of Virology also discover now there's a new lineage. So we have a SARS-1, SARS-2, and potentially that new uh, lineage could be SARS-3, SARS-4. So this just really re-emphasize that Bats carries a lot of coronaviruses, and this coronavirus can recombine and generate new coronaviruses. So in order to find the origin of SARS-CoV-2, we really need to do two things. One is longitudinal study, because if you just go to a back calling example once, you're not going to catch them. Secondly, is to do transparent international collaboration. As we have already demonstrated already, SARS-CoV-2 related viruses are not unique to bats in China. It's all over, at least in Asia. So here is a diagram just to emphasize that point. So here's Wuhan in the middle of China. The human outbreak start there, but now less than you know, uh, uh, 18 months, we have discovered related coronavirus in bats in Japan, in Zhejiang province, China, Yunnan province, China, Thailand, and Cambodia. I'm very, very confident if we intensify our screenings, we will find in all these areas related virus. 
So that already covers a 5,000 kilometers of geographic in the range. But in terms of distribution of these runoff bats, so these are the bats that we know carry the SARS-related coronavirus. So they are distributed in a very, very wide geographic range from east coast of Australia, all the way to where we are in Asia, Middle East, Europe, and Sub-Saharan Africa. So we have to keep it open-minded, you know, in terms of the search for the origin of the SARS-CoV-2, because in theory, any of these geographic locations with the bats that carry similar virus, there is a possibility that this could be the origin of the, uh, the SARS-CoV-2 virus. I need to declare that I have a conflict of interest because uh, I, we have a patent on the surrogate virus neutralization test and the kit is already being marketed under the trade name of CPAS. Thank you for your attention.